Hello, it's Cindy for Flourishes. Today I'm here to show you a quick tip on how to make the fancy borders on the edges of your cards like I've done here. This is a set of cards I made with the Zinnias set, which if you follow my blog, you know I use a lot. I love that set. Um, but I made this cute little set of cards and used a border punch to get these fancy edges like this. And the biggest question that I get asked is how to get them to line up front and back so that when they close you don't see um, the back side. So they're lined up nice and evenly. So I'm going to show you that today. Um, first of all, you'll need a border punch. Um, here are a couple that I have. This one is from EK Success, uh, and this one is a Martha Stewart punch. Uh, one of her newer ones that folds, um, fairly new. She has a bunch that don't fold as well. I have a glue dot stuck on that one. All right, so um, this border punch I will show you first. The most important thing is finding the center of your card. So you want to take your card stock. Uh, this is cut down for a regular size card, five and a half by four and a quarter, uh, and fold it in half. So I want to open up my card, and then on the fold line, I am going to slide my punch in. Now this particular kind I turn upside down because you can see the center of your punch. There's a little dot on the end there. I'm not sure if you can see that in the video. And there's also a line right here so you can see where it needs to be. So I'll go ahead and I'll punch that. That's the most important step is finding the center. And then I'll flip it over and I will continue on punching my pattern all the way down that side and then I'll go all the way down this side. And if I choose to, I will do the other side as well. So that's with that style of punch. And then I will show you on another card stock piece. This is a gray one. Um, this type of punch. You just unfold the sides and Martha has done a wonderful thing and put a little notch right there right in the center on her so you don't even have to turn it upside down. And this is my very, very favorite edge punch. I have to fight myself to not use it. I use it so, so much. I just love that pretty lattice look. And if you ask me what it's called, I have no idea. That is one of my biggest weaknesses is remembering the names of my edge punches. I just don't know. I should put labels on them, huh? then I can put them in my post and people will stop asking me what one it is. <laughs> but it's that one. Looks just like that. So anyway, I would continue down this side as well. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and do it just to show you that it really does line up perfectly. Have you ever punched one and gone too far down? Like, say, I'll do it here. and had that gap. Isn't that frustrating? I have done that more times than I care to remember. But so then you just have to line up both sides. See I'm lining up here and I'm lining up here, the patterns. And pray that you did a really good job lining them up. Of course now I'm paranoid. Ta-da! I did it. I've had lots of practice with that though. Many times I have done that. Okay, so once you've got it all the way down, you can close it and you can see that they line up perfectly. So that means I got my center point exactly. All right, so now that you've seen that, really quickly I'm gonna show you another little thing that I sometimes do with them, is I take my score pal or my score buddy, depending on what's handy, and I'll turn my card inside out and I will just, right next to where I did that pattern, I will score a line or two. Sometimes I'll do two. I'll do two today just for the sake of doing it. And then you just get a really nice finished look. I hope you can see that, but you get a nice finished look there. Another way I'll finish it off sometimes is with a piece of ribbon or cording. I'm quite 
enamored by this cording that flourishes cells. So that's a nice look too. And I'll show you that on a few of my cards. Um, here's one that you've seen recently. I did for, let me get rid of the score pal. I did for Jan Marie's birthday. And that's that punch, see, I can't stop using it. And the April Showers stamp set, and then I did um, the cording actually on both edges. And here's a couple of cards I just made just for this video. This one I did a pretty um, border punch. Again, a Martha Stewart punch. I don't know the name of it. Uh, this is Friendly Reminders, and I made the mailbox wood grain and found this cute little copper heart. Um, and I did a little bit of embossing here with my score pal. I don't know if you can see it. It's between the, the dots. And then finally, I did this one with April showers as well. It gave some shiny boots and again, there's that cording. It just does such a nice job finishing it off. And I added some rhinestones also to give it a nice finished look. Now the last little tip I want to show you is this right here. This is called Nestabling, uh, which is the latest craze from a company called Want to Scrap and Flourishes has all kinds of it in the store right now. And it can be a little tricky to adhere that to your cardstock, so I'll show you a quick way that I do it. Um, here's a die already cut out from the Labels 18 die cut set. I'm actually going to put this colored cardstock down here so you can see it. Isn't that cute? And that's the same one I used on the April Showers card, except a bigger one. So here's what I do, is I peel off my Nesta Bling. Oh, if you're going to color your rhinestones, I do it now, let them dry, and then peel it off. Easier than when you have it on your card. And I will put my rhinestones upside down, so the sticky is facing up, and then put my die down right on top of it. And they're designed to fit perfectly and then I just give it a little pressure, turn it over, and voila, it's perfectly fit. If you try to stick it down on top, it's going to move and you're going to have some trouble getting it lined up straight. So upside down is the easiest way to do that. Okay, so that's all for me today. I hope you've learned a couple of little tips today and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.